Hello and welcome to this midweek message from First Remore Presbyterian Church. Since the start of the year we've been in a little mini-series thinking about how we can make the most out of the time we spend with Jesus. We started by looking at the why and the how of reading the Bible and then last week we began to think about our prayer lives and we began thinking about that using the acronym ACTS and how that can give us a structure to our prayers. Just to remind you, ACTS stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving and Supplication. And the ACTS acronym really helps us to break prayer down into its component parts, if you like. In the same way that an engineer might take a machine apart to look at the different pieces and processes and see how they all work and play different roles. Whenever we use the ACTS acronym, we're able to dismantle our prayers, in a sense, and see how the different aspects of prayer fit together. How do they work together and why are they all important? Because I suggested last week that I think for most of us we can fall into a trap of seeing prayer as merely about asking for things. Giving God a shopping list of our wishes and wants. But whenever we consider everything that the Bible has to say about prayer, all that the Bible teaches us about prayer, we come to discover that it's about much more than that. Last week we considered the role of adoration and confession in prayer. We thought about how we praise God for who he is and that's the starting point of our prayer. Acknowledging the one who it is we come to seek in prayer. Then we thought about confession, about the importance of self-examination and and whenever we see ourselves in light of God, how it reveals our faults and failures, then we bring them to him, seeking his forgiveness in confession. And if you missed the session last week, I'd encourage you to go back and to check it out. It might help with today to help all that fit in. But today we're going to think about the role of thanksgiving and prayer before thinking about supplication and asking for things next week. Whenever we look at the letters that Paul wrote to the very first churches in the New Testament, we notice that he usually spends some time instructing or encouraging them in prayer. And often when he does this, he links prayer with thankfulness. Maybe the the best known example of that is in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, whenever Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Again, in 1 Thessalonians 5, we see Paul write, Rejoice always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And in his letter to the church of Colossae, he writes, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Prayerfulness and thankfulness always go hand in hand in Paul's writing. Not only does he call the church to be thankful, but he also models this thankfulness in prayer as well in his letters to the various churches. Just have to open up your Bible to pretty much any of Paul's epistles, and you'll see almost instantly as you open chapter one that he almost always begins with a prayer of thanksgiving. Very often it's a, a prayer of thanksgiving for the church. And so this idea that prayer and thanksgiving are linked was also something that was picked up by our forefathers in the faith. Whenever the Westminster Divines came to write the Shorter Catechism, they defined prayer in this way. They said, prayer is an offering up of our desires unto God for things agreeable to his will in the name of Christ with confession of our sins and thankful acknowledgement of his mercies. Notice how they acknowledge that prayer is about offering up our desires unto God. We'll think about that next week. Petition, supplication. And then they go on to say that we should make our requests of God with a confession of our sins. We saw that last week, the importance of confessing our sins. But they also note that we do it with thankful acknowledgement of God's mercies. So you see, throughout the Bible, throughout church history, prayer and thanksgiving have always gone hand in hand. And even today, those outside the church are discovering that there's a real benefit in blessing and thankfulness. A few years ago, Forbes Business Magazine carried an article called The Seven Scientifically Proven Benefits of Gratitude. Mental health experts today often link gratitude and thankfulness with positive mental health. It's widely accepted that developing an attitude of gratitude is good for you and indeed has many benefits for both our mental and our spiritual health. 
But whenever we come to give thanks in prayer, what is it that we are to be thankful for? Well, let's look again at Paul for some examples. Because like I said, often he opens his letters by giving thanks for different things, particularly the church. He opens, um, often opens letters giving thanks for fellow believers. We see that in Romans and in 1 Corinthians for the fact that they're growing and developing in their faith. In Philippians, Paul thanks the church in Philippi for their partnership in the gospel. We can do that too. We can give thanks for those who we know who are serving God across this town, across this island and across the world. Those who are sharing the good news about Jesus are our partners in the gospel. We want to pray for them, our, our fellow believers, our fellow church leaders, our fellow Christians, missionaries, pastors, other churches, Christian friends in different places. We, give thank, we can give thanks for those who we know who are serving God. And by praying for them, even in our prayers for them, we are partnering with them in the gospel. I wonder who in your life are you thankful for today? As you look around at your friends and family, even your church family, who can you give thanks for? Who do you give thanks for? Maybe it is someone who you see who God has saved and who's grown up and maturing in their faith. Maybe it's someone who led you to the Lord and you're thankful for the role that they have had in your life and the role that they have had in the lives of other people. Paul seems to spend a lot of time giving thanks for people. And that's a really good example, I think, for us to follow today. Uh, and as we give thanks for people, why not drop them a little note or a text to simply say that we're thankful for them. Encourage them and say we're praying for them today and let them know why we're thankful for them. That can be a real encouragement to them. In 2 Corinthians, Paul begins by thanking God for the comfort that he gives us, the comfort that enables us then to comfort others in their need. In Ephesians, he goes on to thank God again for the uh, with this wonderful prayer of how God has saved us and we can thank God for our salvation. Thanksgiving can be for people, it can be for the things that God does for us. And if we're believers today, surely that should be where our thanksgiving begins, that we are thankful that he has redeemed us from our sin and that he has given us new life and new hope in him. If you look closely at the passage from 1 Thessalonians that I referred to a few minutes ago, you'll see that we're told, or Paul tells the church in Thessalonica, actually, give thanks in all circumstances. That's pretty inclusive, isn't it? There's not many limits placed there. Our thanksgiving should be widespread. We are to be extravagant, if you like, in our thanksgiving. We are to be bold in our thanksgiving. We're not to limit the things that we give thanks for. We've seen Paul gives thanks for people. In the book of Psalms, the psalmist gives thanks for situations and circumstances. Psalm 16, he notes how the lines have fallen for him in pleasant places, a way of speaking about God's goodness to him. In other Psalms, we see it's dedicated to thanking God for his faithfulness to his people in the past. We can and indeed we should also give thanks for answered prayer. Before asking for more things from God, we should pause and take time and reflect on the ways in which he has answered our prayers and thank him for his goodness and generosity to us. The, the definition of prayer from the Shorter Catechism that I referred to earlier specifically talked about giving thanks to God for his mercies. A, a wonderful way of speaking about thanking God for all the ways that he has blessed us. But really when they think about God's mercies, they're thinking of how he has blessed us spiritually and calling us to himself. There are so many ways and so many examples of good thanksgiving. So many ways that we can cultivate this thankfulness in prayer and we should. I want to just suggest a few ways that you might want to try to develop this attitude of thanksgiving today. Why not try journaling? At the end of each day, sit down with a notebook or a piece of paper and make a list of all the things you're thankful for that day. Run through your day in your head. What did you do? What things could you give thanks for? Small things and maybe big things. Maybe it's a, a biscuit with a quiet cup of tea in the midst of a crazy day. Maybe it was a task that you got finished that had been looming over you for a long time. Maybe it was an encouraging conversation with a friend. Maybe it was simply the blessing of having read the scriptures and met Jesus there in a quiet moment. If you can't think to make a full list of your day of things to be thankful for, I'm sure most of us could Find one thing each day that we're thankful for. Find that one thing, write it in your diary, write it on your calendar. And by the end of the week, you'll have seven reasons for Thanksgiving. At the end of the month, you'll have 30 reasons for Thanksgiving and turn those lists into prayers. At Harvest, I shared the concept of a gratitude jar with you. 
Place an empty jam jar on the kitchen table. Each day, write down something that you're thankful for. Get each person in the house to do it and put it in the jar. And then, each day, take a slip and use that as a prayer of thanksgiving for the people and situations you've previously put in. Why not take time today to write out your journey of faith? Think back over the years. Even if you share it with no one, write it out and consider the various ways that God has been with you and helped you through the many twists and turns of life. And use that as a way of giving thanks. Maybe don't even do it for your whole life. Maybe just take time to think and prayerfully write out about what has happened to you over this last year. What has God been teaching you? What has he been changing in you? What has he been showing you in his word? What has he been doing in your life this year? Take time to see and notice the way that God has blessed you. Even in the midst of pandemic and lockdown. And turn that into a prayer. Those are just a couple of ideas to help us cultivate a daily attitude of gratitude. But perhaps the most simple opportunity that we have for Thanksgiving each day is one of the oldest traditions in the, the Christian life. Uh, to simply say grace at mealtimes. To pause and give thanks for our food. Three times a day we have opportunity for a very focused Thanksgiving. Thank God simply for his food, for his daily bread, for the fact that he has again met our needs. And thank him for the people who we share those meals with, the people who we eat with. Maybe pray for the people who we no longer share meals with because of lockdown and pray and long for the day when we can. But thank God for those people, for the friends and family that he has given us. As I've said in previous weeks, these are just some of my thoughts, some things that I have found helpful in the past. I offer them to you with the prayer that they might be helpful to you, that they might deepen your relationship with the Lord and that they might help you to give thanks this day. Let us all commit to be people who are thankful people this day. Let us give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Let us do that now together as we come and pray. Heavenly Father, we come today and we give thanks. For as we have just said, your love endures forever and your mercy is without end. We thank you for that love and mercy extended to us in Jesus. We thank you for how he has come and rescued us and redeemed us. Father, we thank you for the blessings of this life, for family and friends to share the journey, for food to sustain us, for shelter and for safety. Father, we pray that you would help us, even in the the midst of lockdown and pandemic and so much negativity around us, help us to see that there are still many reasons for thanksgiving. That your goodness still comes to us in simple and often unknown and unthought about ways. Help us, Father, to, to meditate on your goodness to us and to give you thanks. Father, help us, we pray, to be thankful people. Because we have so much to rejoice in today as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless and take care.